we got a bridge pulling up, you know what that means. Windows down, drop a gear, maybe two, one more maybe, and disappear. Before the video starts, I actually want to thank everybody who watched the last video. We got almost over 180 views on the last video. I really do appreciate it. We also got a lot of new subs. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Paige Rodriguez. I post automotive content and uh, I post every Monday and Thursday. So make sure to stay tuned. Hit the notification bell so you guys are notified. Let's get started with the video. So you want a 2015 WRX. Well, let me give you guys a couple reasons why you guys probably shouldn't get it. Before we actually start, I actually want to say these are all my opinions. These aren't facts. And all these things that I'm going to say can be fixed if you have, you know, a little bit of moolah. These are things that I wish the WRX had already, you know, when it came out of the factory, but they didn't. So let's get started with the video. So hopefully you guys can hear me and see me there. But we're going to start off with the most obvious and that are the wheels. Wheels are hideous on the WRX. I really do not like them at all. You can get the premium version of the WRX and it comes with uh, with 18s, not eight and a half, 18, eight and a half, I don't know the offset. Then uh, 245s, 35, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. I'll put the specs up right now. But the base WRX, which is the one I have, comes with these wheels. I don't know, you've probably seen them. Every WRX has them. Um, they're 235s, 40, right? 235, 40, 17s. They're 17s, so they're way smaller than the 18s. It is so hot next to those wheels because I was just driving. But um, either way, wheels are hideous in the WRX. I can't wait to change mine. So here are the wheels up close. You guys can see they are, I'm not, I'm not even going to comment how many spokes there are. There's a lot of spokes. If you guys are into this type of wheel design, you know, go ahead. It's your taste. Like, I've never heard anything bad about these wheels breaking or anything. So they're, they're good wheels for sure. Just, you know, I just really don't like them. And I think the worst part of these wheels is how many little spokes it has and like they're so hard to clean. It literally takes like 10 minutes to clean one wheel. Like it's literally, it literally takes that much. That's why the other day I took like three hours to clean the car. For number two, every WRX and STI owner deals with this. There's nothing you can do about it. I know you're probably thinking, oh, it's the wheels or like maybe the mud flaps or the exhaust, but no, it's not that. It's literally this part of the WRX. I did not clean it just because of that. I usually clean it before the video, but no, I wanted to show you guys. Look at that. Look how dirty that gets. You can literally spend three hours cleaning the car and you're gonna wake up the next morning and that shit's dirty. If you wake up in the morning and that's not dirty, you gotta, better go play the lottery because you're, you're lucky. Literally don't know why. It might be because how the car's designed, like the, the water runs through there, maybe water out of the trunk. I don't even know, to be honest. It just it just happened. You guys probably never noticed that on somebody else's car, but now that I told you guys, you probably are gonna notice it. Unless you're like on top of it and every time you hop in the car, you clean it off, it's gonna be dirty. That's the thing I hate about the WRX and like you really can't do much about it. So, we you gonna move on. Let me get my keys before I lock myself out. Ugh. Quick question. If you guys have a double action and you leave your keys inside the car, does it lock by itself? But either way, number three. One second, let's see if I can open this. Ooh, that's steamy. So number three is how much the parts cost for these WRXs and STI. They're stupidly expensive. Uh, this is my first car I've ever had, and I've really only bought parts for this car because it's my first car I've ever had, and my only car that I have right now. Right now, later on, we're gonna get another car for the channel. But you know, to push a lot of power out of a WRX, you need a lot of money. For the STIs, it's a little bit easier because the platform, the EJ platform, has been out for way longer than the FA. A lot more people know how to work on them, and you can pretty much just go like on IIR or like MA Performance, and you can buy all the parts you need for a STI. Let's say you want to go like 500 horsepower, you can literally just go in, type in everything you need, and it'll pop up. Well, the WRX is a little bit more complicated because the engine is so new, the FA20 is so new that not too many people have worked on it as much as the EJ has because it's been around for like 25 years. So yeah, it's kind of like a letdown of the WRX and I was actually going to get an intake while well, I'm going to get an intake for this car at MA Performance. I'm going MA Performance route because uh, I heard a lot of bad things about the Cobb and the MA is a little safer to run and everything. So we're going to go to the MA route. But I was actually checking out the intakes or the Stage 1 Plus kit. It comes with the intake, the Stage 1 Plus tune and it also comes with, um, I said intake, right? Access port. It also comes with the access port. Because with the access port, the intake, and the... I just said it. The access port, the intake, and the tune. It comes with the tune. Um, and it's like about $1,000, $1,010. And if you get it for the STI, pretty much the same thing. Stage, I think the, I think that's stage two for the... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure intake... No, I think it's stage one. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think stage two for the, double, for the STI is intake boost controller and tune but for the sti i think that whole kit's like 800 dollars for the double rx is like a thousand thousand and ten thousand twenty around there so so yeah parts for the double rx are kind of expensive you guys should let me know down below if you want to see another engine bay cleaning video because look how musty that looks guys if i'm talking too fast in the video i'm sorry i'm amped up on like six cups of coffee so i'm trying to i'm trying to slow it down for you guys because i i naturally talk fast i'm cuban so you know 
number whatever one is gas gas is it gas isn't really too bad in this car i get like 20 miles per gallon depends how hard i drive the car i know some people get less some people get more some people say they get 30 like how do you get 30 miles per gallon unless you're driving like 10th gear or some crap but i don't even know but either way gas isn't too bad in this car but i wish it could be a little better it being a, a four cylinder turbo it's still well it being a four cylinder it wastes a lot of gas but plus the turbo i, I get it and uh, these box ranges run a little rich i've heard um, so I, I, I kind of understand the gas mileage and all that, but I really wish it was a little bit better, at least like 28. I feel like you could drive it at 28, but you just really got to drive it slow. <laughs> if you guys are paying attention to the video, I think I've walked around this car like 40 times already. I'm getting my workout in today. And it's hot out here. Florida is not playing, bro. Whew. Number six, five? No. More? I'm lost. All right, now for number five, we actually have to get in the car. I'm going to try to make this quick in here because it is hot. I'm pretty sure every XX owner and STI owners complains about this, and that is the red paint. I've complained about it pretty much in every other video, and I'm still complaining until I get rid of it. It's kind of hard to get that first or second gear shift perfect. If you get the access port, you can get rid of it, but Subaru should have just fixed it right out the factory and not had to have us deal with it. But like I said, guys, all these things can be fixed. It's not like you're like stuck with it forever. You can always, you know, if you got money, you can always fix all these things like the red paint, get an access port, power, just go get an intake, stage two or a pro tune, whatever. And uh, wheels, you can always get new wheels. A dirty bumper in the back though? Forget about it. You're not, you're not doing anything about that. Might as well just sell a car if that bothers you. Because I've tried, trust me, I've tried. Like I put every single wax I could think of on there. Like wake up the next morning, dirty. I actually gotta show you guys something in the back. But when I was actually putting on the wing, I had to drill some holes on each side to get the wing mounted on. And uh, I guess I didn't clean it good, and I left some particles. I don't know if you guys can see how good the camera focuses. But all those little particles, those are all, there are not that many on this side, but those are all pieces of pretty much of the trunk that I left on there that I did not notice because I cleaned the car as soon as we put the wing on, but I guess I didn't clean it good enough. I've already talked to a couple people about that, and they told me to use a clay bar or iron remover to get rid of it. So we're gonna have to do that soon. We're gonna have to go make a video on that because I want to get rid of that. That kind of pisses me off. Every time I clean the car, there's always little specks of metal there. And it's a plastic bumper, so I don't really know how it's stained. I guess it just got under the coat or something. I don't know. But either way, we gotta get that fixed. So before I actually end the video, I wanna do something real quick. I actually wanna use the vacuum because I don't think you guys saw me using it last time. I kinda just made a quick little brief review on it and a little unboxing video, but you guys never saw me use it. So we're gonna use it real quick to clean up the front seat because it's a little bit dirty. If you guys have like 20 bucks, it's probably like the best mod you can do to your car. It doesn't matter what kind of car you have. So first thing you're gonna do is get it out the bag. Just, you know, just like that. Let me pick that up before I lose it. <laughs> Next, you plug it into your cigarette lighter, just like that. And pick that up too. I'm about to lose everything. Get your keys. Turn on your car and shazam, just like that. Don't forget to put this little part out so you can actually use it. There you go. Armor all, if you guys are watching this, make sure to hit your boy up with a sponsor. A hashtag armor all down below. Sometimes there's particles that really get inside the carpet and the only way you're gonna get that out is if you use the brush. If I can find it, one second. I think it's in my pot. Nope. Where did I put that? Jeez, I think I, I think I might have lost it already. No, I had it in my hand, right? You guys saw me get it. One second. All right, here it is. My bad. So yeah, you get the brush. So you get the brush. You stick it in the front, just like this. Try to do this with one hand, just like that. And then you turn it back on and. Then when you're done, you press this button right here, you open up the front. If I can do it one hand. If it's supposed to my car, I'm gonna cry. Let me do it up, there you go. Open that, take out the filter, and there you go. Don't blow your trash out, just like that. Don't worry guys, this is only dirt and leaves. I'm putting it back to its environment. I'm not littering, so don't litter. Don't do that, no good. So I'm gonna end the video right here, guys. It's super hot out here. I don't know if you guys can see how much I'm sweating, but if you guys wanna see more videos like this, make sure to let me know down in the comments and like this video, share it, hit the notification bell so you guys get a notification every time I post. See you guys in the next one. It's crazy hot out here.